Hey guys, 1GD FTV diesel engine. Just a few people have been asking about the EGR system and uh, what you can do to help reduce that. And I don't really know the answer, but many years ago, somebody decided they're going to put a plate in on these engines. And uh, that's where they place it down there, right? So there's one in this vehicle. A lot of people have said, and it is true, that they're very difficult to get to and to to undo these bolts, to loosen them off. They are very tight, you know, it's the heat situation from the exhaust system. Um, so what we're gonna do is, you've gotta have some special tools to get in there, and I'm not suggesting you do or don't put a plate in, and or what size the hole is. I certainly haven't got enough experience yet to tell you what works with a 1GD FTV with EGR flow reduction plates or stuff like that, but <clears throat> the plate that's in there I believe it's sold by Kaon, kaon.com.au, they manufacture in Australia, and it's got a 13 mil hole, and I think they may have determined that 13 mil generally works, and there was also other people that were providing me information that said that they slowly made the hole bigger and 13 works. Um, what I will say is, a couple of times I've had an engine light on my vehicle, and that sort of, uh, I'm sort of thinking maybe, you know, a bit of off-road use only testing it may have been what caused you know engine light p0400 once or twice but um, we did expensive extensive testing oh off-road of course you know private property and I've got to say it's 99 point something percent no problem but there's always a possibility of having that issue so if you're going to put one in there I highly recommend you've got some sort of scan tool or once again that Autofix 3210 for, from Trevor Ryan, Dirt Road 4x4 in Werribee, Autofix Australia. Um, not just for to scan this, but uh, you know if you've got any other issues that you may have with technology. So basically, you've got to get to these nuts. You can see one there and the other one's underneath. We'll turn the light on in a minute. You can see where the plate is. See the little tab sticking out. If, you want to, if you're looking at buying a vehicle or something like that, and you, or you want to take note of who's got one, see that little tab sticking out there? Right, so you've got the stainless steel gasket, but right in the middle of the picture, that's once you loosen the nuts off the plate, will slip in and out. So we're going to show you some of the tools that might work, special tools that have been manufactured um, that might work because they are very tight. You want to make sure you use a six-point socket, no 12-point gear or anything on here. It needs to be six-point. You need to get all your angles right and don't slip and lean or lean against things. You know, up here you know, that you might, you know, break or something. So be very careful of other vehicle components. It is difficult to get these bolts undone, even on a fairly new vehicle. Uh, and as the older they get, they could be harder to get undone. So let's have a look at the tools that might work. And then let's get in there and see if we can get this, uh, these nuts undone, just to give you a bit of an example, what they may be like when they're a few years old. When I say six point socket, most people know what I'm talking about. Can you see the six points? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Not a 12 point. That would be like this spanner here. You can see all the different, you know, the different, it's easier, quicker, you get more positions, but it's not great for the nut. So you need to do the six point, but the problem is you can't, if you look at the position of it, you can't get in there with a socket in behind. So what's happened here is a special tool. See, there's a nut welded on the back. Looks like some professional welding there too, yeah? Right, so that's the special tool. And then you can get onto this that's larger with a spanner that's got an angled head on it. Well, that's the plan. Let's get in there and have a look. If we can get this into position and then get the spanner with an angled head on the back of it and make sure the bigger nut with the 12 point isn't gonna slip on the nut and see if they come undone. Let's get in there. Okay, mate, so we could have sprayed this. I've got a video, so you've got to do the handwork again. Thank you. Right, so that's the socket fits in all right. Yeah, look at that, mate, beautiful. So we're gonna to have to have one hand, once we get the spanner on there, we're gonna to have to have one hand like that, holding that on nice and flush, and one hand on the spanner. Do you wanna see if you can get the spanner in there? I'll keep videoing, we'll see how this goes. I'll just try and get the right. Right. And you've got to remember about not leaning on all those, the guard and the airbox and the master cylinder and all this. And once you're happy that it's all pushed all the way on nice and square, and you don't want to 
just see how you feel. Have a bit of a feel. If it's too hard, we can cut and take two and take three and all that. See how you feel about if that's going to come undone or not. Get yourself comfortable before you go for it. slip and bloody break yourself or the vehicle. Tight, yeah. Let's do a take two. Right, you comfortable now? Take two. You ready to go for it? Sounds good. There it is. It's moving. You the man. and groaning as well <laughs> right so guys that's what you need you need a tool like that and every time you reposition see how he's ratcheting you need to make sure your nut socket tooly thing stays on there right now we're just going to take a quick breather and then we'll reposition on the bottom nut and show you um, and just because you know there's skills here make sure because he look, makes it look easy that you don't think it's easy because I'll tell you it's not unless you've got some awesome tooling Okay, so he's just getting in position to take three on that bottom bolt. So it's all in position. Gonna load it up a bit, give it a bit of curry and see what happens, mate. Take it easy. Ooh, tight, huh? Yep. All right, we're gonna take a breather and have another look. All right, he just wanted to get one more click and get it all repositioned. He's all happy, so we're on a take. What are we up to? Two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is anyway. Let's give it a crack and see what happens. Tight, huh? Mm. All right, here we go. Two hands, see what happens. Bit of a pressure and jerk. Super. Super difficult to get undone, isn't they? Mm. All right, let's get some spray onto it and see what happens, see if that helps. Okay, so we've got the uh, spanner on a slightly bigger angle, the one that's got an angle and an extra extension. The problem is getting in there where you've got room to get in there with that extra leverage, but we're going to give it a little crack, see what happens. Get a lot of flex in those spanners too, so it's going to be a matter of sort of loading it up and giving it a bit of a bounce pressure, isn't it? Tight, isn't it? Mm. Okay, so we're getting in there with the uh, two hands with a slightly longer spanner that's not adjustable. See what happens. I can feel the whole end. <coughs> there it is, mate. Unbelievably tight. Good work. Okay, so now that we've cracked it loose with that ratchet spanner. Any little ratchet spanner that, so it's got the adjustable head on it and you just press the button to get it to lock in. So it's not a loose angle, it's a locked in angle. How well do you find that the angle locks in for you? Does it work pretty well? Works pretty good. That's the King Chrome ones, isn't it? Correct. Mm. So we're going to loosen off. Warranties. Sorry. Lifetime warranty. Yeah, that's it. Um, we're just going to loosen them off and we should be able to slip that plate out once it's a few more turns. When you reckon you've got a couple of turns on that, let's do the top one and then just carefully grab that plate. Don't take it off. We don't need to take it off. Just take the socket off, yeah. Is the socket off? Oh, you got the socket off, isn't it? Oh, there it is. See, I don't even know what's going on. Let's uh, loosen the top one. We have to get a 12 mil. Are these 12 mil? The 12 mil, Correct. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> 12 mil, loosen off that top one. And we'll just show you what the plate looks like. At least that'll give you a conclusion because some people seem to think that EJR flow reduction plates are going to block up and stuff like that. But you're not understanding the systems. This is just exhaust soot. Okay, so it'll be painted like it's been spray painted black. With a bit of a wiggle and a pull. There it is. Let's take it over the bench and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we've got it over here on the bench now just to show you the deal, 13 mil hole, right? You can see the it's just black soot, right? If you did me a favor with a rag, just give that a wipe there and just to demonstrate. It's just a dirty black exhaust, see that? So you can see it comes straight off. It's not going to block up, 
All right, that plate's been in that vehicle for a long time. It's not blocked up. It's certainly going to reduce the EGR flow. That's what we know. Is it enough to keep the intake clean? Well, that's what we're not sure about. So what we're going to go the next step now for those that hung around. And there is some photos around that I've seen and may have posted, I don't think it's in a video, where one of our workshop partners has put the camera in and had a look at the uh, intake system on these 1GD engines. And we've seen some varying results. Now, this vehicle, it's done almost 70,000 Ks. I think the plate's been in for about 60,000, or about 50,000 Ks. So it was near new, okay? It's certainly not gonna block up. It certainly reduces the flow. It may or may not be illegal. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. Gray areas, you know, depending on the wording, what state or country you're in. Um, some people may or may not care. It's very difficult to get the bolts undone. We're just gonna go and tighten those up now and get the camera in and have a look at the intake system and show you what it is on this vehicle. And then you can look at others and compare and make your own conclusion as to whether it works or not. Let's not forget we need to uh, tighten up these two nuts on the system there. And they're like, you know, that one we haven't sprayed. We only sprayed the top, we only sprayed the bottom one, correct? Yeah. Correct. So, but yeah, they are very tight. You can see it loads a whole heap of, there's a whole heap of pressure you need to put on it and they're quite difficult to get to. So it's probably worth taking to a professional you know, that's if you can find one, mechanic, technician type thing. One of our full before diesel workshop partners could probably take care of a job like this. But of course, you need to know what the legalities are. It's your vehicle, it's your choice. Um, they'll put it in for you as instructed, I believe. Some will, some won't, maybe. Um, but you know, it's a personal choice what you want to do. Let's get to those that bottom one. Anyway, you can see what we're doing, guys. We're just going to nip those up. We'll tighten up this one. We'll come back to the top one and double check that as well. You always go from this one to that one back and forth a little bit, make sure. And then we're going to get in the intake and have a look. What does the intake look like at almost 70,000 Ks? So we're just coming in over this side, right? Passenger side of the engine. Got to take off the clamp there. There's a 10 mil down there, a really fun position to get to. See middle of the picture. Slip that hose off and we're going to put the camera in up this end and have a bit of a looksy looksy. Hose off as you can see, right? So we're going in down. I've got the light off, but you can see I might get the camera down there with the light on afterwards. But at the moment, right, you can see what's going on. I've got the light off. You can see it's clean as a whistle in there, right? But we've got the camera here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to try and hold this still. I'll you go for it, mate. Look how clean that butterfly is, right? It's like bloody new, isn't it? Huh? So you have a look around. You go in and do what you got to do. I'll just try and hold this here. Or you muck around. If it gets too boring for everyone, we'll cut. And we'll get in there a bit further. But you guys have a look. We've got to get in a bit further to find some mess. But the point is, that's a standard EGR system. And it's a standard... PCV system, if you know what I mean. Not quite standard, but what you're seeing is the oil, the crankcase ventilation, the engine ventilation system. You get a bit of oil in that. It goes back to the intake. That's what you're looking at, a little bit oily. It is quite difficult to get a position to be able to see something a bit further in. And we may have got the whole screen covered in grease or oil or something like that, perhaps. Um, yeah, that's what it was. Okay, that's the end of the camera. You can see the problem while the screen went, right? So we know there is some sort of crap in there, right? Have a good look at that. Do you want to try and... Uh, yeah, that's it. Get a bit of light around it, right? So you know, don't think that, you know, oh, 1KDs have got problems and other engines don't because they've all got EGR systems, right? Look at that mess. Let's clean it up and try and take two, eh? That is just what got picked up on the end of the camera. Look at that mess. Disgusting technology problems, yuck. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the camera down, the, this camera direct down, and see what we can see in there. Cause people wanted this, they wanna know about it, right? So we're gonna do the best we can, all right? All right, so out here looks pretty good. Because that, I mean, well, you're a bit sideways, but that doesn't matter, right? What matters is we can't get any closer than that. Let me see if I can zoom it. Wow, we're getting good at this stuff. 
Look at that throttle plate though, how clean it is compared to some other vehicles. So that's really good. Right. You can see what you can see. We need to get the camera in again. So let's go back to that, eh? Okay, so we're back in the hole and you can have a bit of a look around and when we've compared to other vehicles, even though we had that crap on the end of the camera, this one's looking it's a lot cleaner in there, isn't it? How far in are we? Where are we? This is the thing. We haven't done that much work on these yet. We need to get these engines out and get the manifolds off before oh, we can actually... Uh, there's the butterfly valve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the valve. Yeah, can we get to the other side of it? Hang on. Don't, don't rush yourself, though. So that's one side of it, yeah. That's one, other, one side. We'd really love to see the other side. I know it's going to be difficult. So we need to go somehow get backwards and then get down. See me? I'm, I'm trying to twist the camera trying to get the angle right, but it's not working. Oh, okay, so it's quite difficult, guys, but what we're seeing so far, even though... There we go, he's getting under there. That's good work, mate. It's very clean compared to some others we've seen that haven't had a plate in there. We need to come back and angle it up and get it the underside of those. Mm. Yeah, it's quite funny. I'm here like trying to twist the camera, trying to get the angle, whatever. <laughs> and it's not, it's not helping. You can see there's a bit of soot around, yeah. We haven't seen any thick build up anywhere. Oh, just on the left of the picture there. That could be where the uh, camera went before maybe and scraped, did a bit of scraping which is what built up on the end of the camera. So, it's not looking too bad. Hang on, what do we got there? We're headed over this way, that's what we want to see. A bit of a twisting and pulling and... There's a soot there. Yeah. It's not deep thick though, yeah. I don't think. It's, it's hard only, to see. It's only a few a little bit of wetness, there's a bit of oil sitting there. You there's know. a scrape. Yeah, the scrape mark where the There's camera went and pushed it, right? So that's yeah. why what looked like a lot, not really a lot, but it was scraping along and pushing. So work your way slowly, head that way. and Like a bloody... Are you a gynecologist in your previous life? <laughs> yeah. The ovarian cam. Could have been good practice. Any gynecologists out there that can give us a hand, you might have some better equipment. You can come in here and we'll get the hose yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see the lump right on the end there, yeah. I'm still not seeing anything thick, exciting build up yet, but there's enough there. It just looks yuck, doesn't it? Yeah, it's nothing thick. There's only a certain distance we can get in. There'll be other videos. Like always, subscribe, turn the bell on, give us a like button. We're trying to help you out with the information we've got at hand. Other makes and models, I can't tell you what plate, where to put it, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't do that. I mean, you know, we're. We've only seen it on, we've seen it, we know there's hundreds, we've probably seen it on hundreds of cars, the 1KDs. We've seen a few of these, you know, I say a few, probably more than that. I'm trying to be a bit modest where I can. Sorry in these videos where I'm talking like, oh, look how good we are, and you know, because I said so. You know, you get a bit of that. You know, I'm not the best or anything. I don't know everything, but, you know, sometimes I get a bit excited, a bit carried away. It's hard to get anywhere else but here, isn't it? So start pulling it out backwards slowly and see what happens and maybe give it a twist. Should we give it a twist if possible? Maybe a bit of an in and out and a twist and yeah, it's, we're not really getting a lot out of it. Anyway, we did what we can. If we get any good footage, I'll um, fire it up again. But if not, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, butter bing, butter boom. It could be butter boom. No, this is actually looking pretty good overall. So the plate with the 13 mm hole could work really well. You might, you know, you might get a P0400, you might not. That's a bit of an unknown one, especially as they get older and things aren't working quite right as they did when they were new. Uh, if you've got a 30 mm plate in and you did have P0400s, please let us know in the comments. Subscribe, bell on, like button, where are you guys? Thanks for watching, see you.